AI aims to create intelligent machines that can learn and problem solve like humans. Machine learning is a powerful branch of AI. By crunching massive data sets, it helps researchers uncover hidden patterns and gain deeper insights. We'll now hear from Professor Simon Vosper, Director of Science at the Met Office. Simon and his team are at the forefront of this exciting intersection between AI and climate science, where machine learning is currently supporting the ongoing work of existing climate models. Okay, so, uh, I mean, currently I think we're using machine learning in, you know, throughout the value chain, if you like. So if you, um, for either a climate or, or a weather prediction, it all starts with observations. So um, we use machine learning in processing our observations, you know, in quality control, um, in maybe understanding those observations. There's some really nice developments in um, climate science looking at very old uh, historical observations where maybe the data quality is not very good or there's missing information. We can use machine learning to recover those observations and actually make them much more useful. So, so we're using it in observations. We can use it in the simulation step. So um, either replacing the full climate or weather model, the complex physics model, we can emulate that with machine learning, uh, not replace it, but as a complementary tool. And we can run our simulations much faster if we use machine learning there. And then in the final step where we take our the data that we produce through the weather and climate model and process it to either make a new service or post process it to improve its quality, we, we apply machine learning there. So, for example, um, our current weather forecast, we use machine learning to improve our temperature forecast. Um, we know there are deficiencies in some of the physics based models, so we can use machine learning to improve the quality of, say, uh, our prediction of maximum daily temperature. So it's really all the way through the value chain. One of the main ways we experience climate change is through weather at a very local level. A key challenge in climate science is taking large scale projections on how the climate might change and interpreting that information to local weather impacts. Simon explains the difference machine learning tools can make to achieve this. So with physical modelling, the way we do that is downscale uh, and run our physical climate models at very, very high resolution. Uh, that's a great technique and there have been some really significant scientific advances that come from that in, in recent years. But it's very challenging to do because these computations are very expensive. You know, as you run at higher and higher resolution, the supercomputer scale you need and the time it takes to run those simulations just grows. So, so one of the really exciting opportunities with AI is a, is a technique to downscale that climate information right down to local level uh, to predict the weather on local scales. And we think we can do that much more cheaply than we can with uh, physical climate models. So that, that's a really exciting opportunity. Machine learning capabilities are a main focus for the team at the Met Office and partnerships are fundamental to their approach. Met Office scientist Dr Rachel McInnes is co-director of the Joint Centre of Excellence in Environmental Intelligence. Based at Exeter University, they partner with the Met Office and many other research institutions. Here she describes the importance of such collaborations. When you're looking at AI and the weather and climate, you really need a diverse range of expertise around the table. Our partnership with Extra University allows us to bring in expertise from the university side. So um, some social scientists, some people that are experts in particular types of machine learning, such as large language models, and also the Met Office bringing the weather expertise, the climate expertise, the data scientists. Rachel then goes on to discuss why a diverse set of people are critical in obtaining results that benefit many and the importance of reaching out to find the next generation of talent in this field. So we know that AI um, amplifies whatever we put in. So any um, biases that are in the underlying data in AI uh, get amplified and, and magnified uh, with, with machine learning and AI. Um, I think it makes it all the more important when we're putting the team together to work on things that we've got a diverse range of voices around the table that we're hearing from everyone so that we make sure there aren't accidentally um, biases in the methods or biases in the in the data that's going into it uh, and just generally diverse teams work better 
I think you need the diversity of approaches and the diversity of ideas and also different lived experiences. And it's the same with uh, climate science. We might have a group of scientists who know about the data, who know about the climate modeling, but really you need to know about the end users, the people who are gonna make a decision, the people that are going to be affected by this change. You need their views and their expertise as well. Here, Simon touches on an example of the types of risk associated with this field of technology. Yeah, there's a, there's a few actually. Um, so yes, this is a really exciting opportunity, but we do need to be careful. Um, so for example, um, to some degree, these machine learning techniques are like a black box. They, they don't really have the laws of physics baked in, in the way that our, our current climate and weather models do. So, you know, th there's a trust element here. You know, if you, if you have a prediction of severe weather or uh, severe uh, climate impact made by one of these techniques, how do we trust it? If, if we're not sure the laws of physics are really baked in in the way they are with the traditional modeling approach, you know, would you make a decision uh, based purely on an AI algorithm or would you want to refer back to the, the physical modeling system to really check that check that decision? So that that's one element. Um, there's something about ethics as well as there is more generally with AI. Um, you know, weather and climate data tend not to be, not to hold people related or personal information. But if you're thinking about climate impacts for, you know, example, the chance of flooding, that information, you know, historical flooding, uh, that is personal information, people's lives are affected. So we need to be really careful of how we treat that data and how we use the information. The Joint Centre of Excellence in Environmental Intelligence is currently conducting a set of projects supported by the Met Office and other academic institutions. These include delivering the intelligent fusion of data from satellite and in situ surface sensors to help understand our changing planet. Another is developing data science and AI methods to quantify uncertainty in frequency of extreme weather on future power systems. And a first in the UK, an interesting project called Credo, where a digital twin, which is a virtual model of a physical object, has been created across energy, water and telecoms networks, providing a practical example of how connected data can improve climate adaptation and resilience. These projects illustrate the direction of AI and machine learning tools in supporting important insights across climate extremes and their impacts. It also reveals new challenges, as Rachel explains. I think the great challenge with AI and climate is getting the information into the hands of the people who need to make the decision. Uh, so if I think of an example of a farmer in the Sahel who might need to access uh, seasonal climate information about um, the, the rainfall in the coming season and think for them making a decision about what type of crop to grow or when to harvest their crop, they've got a real world uh, decision to make about their livelihood and about the livelihood of that region. Now, if that farmer, if uh, she could access, say, a, a chatbot, an interface that would let her using her normal uh, spoken language without using really technical expertise, if she could enter a question into that, and that would pull down, say, from, from the cloud, the latest climate information, give her that, answer that question. She doesn't need to have a supercomputer on her uh, on her farm and she can access that, but that's really putting the, the power of that data um, into the hands of the people that need to make the decision. I think that's where the real power of AI can come in. So what about the future? Where are we going with machine learning and climate science? The pace of change with AI and advancement is, is so fast, it's astonishing. And, and we're seeing it in you know every aspect of our lives, really, not just in for weather and climate science, of course. Um, if you'd asked me this question a year ago, I would have said, well, I can see this being useful, but I'm, you know, I've got some reservations. And but now I look at what's happened in the last year, uh, and I'm really convinced that actually we're going to see AI changing our science and changing our capabilities really quite radically over the next four or five years. Um, so I, in future, I see us using AI much more routinely in our in our services. Um, the question will be how we integrate that alongside the physical modelling, and I'm not sure I see how that will work yet, but, it, you know, I only see it's an opportunity. So um, 
it's really hard to predict what the future will look like in, in the space in a couple of years' time, but I do see it being uh, used really in, in a quite a widespread way. I think we need to decide where we want to go next because I think uh, so much of this is possible. Um, it's really limitless in where this could go next. So I think we need to think about these use cases, about um, how we can help decision makers. We might decide that the most important thing would be to help uh, a region affected by tropical cyclones We've got a project ongoing at the moment about um, using machine learning to, to better model the tracks and uh, the impacts from tropical cyclones, uh, which is yielding uh, positive results so far. So that might be something that we think about um, areas that are disproportionately affected by the impacts of climate change and thinking what um, AI research can we do to, to really get the key information into the hands of the people that need to make decisions about, about infrastructure, about planning.